come and stun immigrants and said to take down all the addresses of those with terrorist wall signs. Which sheriff was that? Uh, Portage, in Portage County. Portage. His name is Zukowski. That's where Kent State's feel. located in Portage County. I mean, you just, yeah. you know, like I said, I, feel for those I, still, I, I look yeah, at the city manager on the news, and I'm just like, you know, just, these are just people like the people we work with here, and all of a sudden you're on, you're on the Trump's radar. The mayor and what was the title? He's a Republican. Yeah. And he's just beside himself, and I felt for him. I said, oh, God, what if they have It's going. It's gone. It easily could. It easily could. Had how many bomb threats to multiple schools now? They canceled the festival. Yeah. The festival. In Springfield, there were calls almost certainly from white supremacists. But they were from the past. They said they called the past. Really? Is it just the like the number? Is it like a VPN? But it could also be. Russia is not. Potentially. I mean, imagine how easy that would be if you were to like a disruptor agent. Yeah, yeah, just, just like, call, call and up. say, yeah. Yeah, there's a bomb at school. Yeah. You'd Can't figure we figured you. that out pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's crazy is that they were paying some of the biggest YouTube Hi. conservative influencers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 Did Alex make your shirt? When I saw your shirt, I was like, oh, oh, your shirt is beautiful. Could have. <laughs> it's a lovely knit. I look at my favorites, actually. <laughs> you know, like, and so it may produce what for them is nope. the intended result. Absolutely. And in fact, the same memes that the right are pushing yeah. because they we're pushing it, it. <laughs> are the same ones that liberals are pushing because it's ridiculous. Cats and so right. <laughs> no one's running in at the last minute. Time, right? And we're laughing because we can't believe it. But, yeah. but we, and we help spread the, yeah, we help spread the information. You're like, I'm like, oh no. I usually leave like at like 15 before, even though I know it takes me four minutes to get here. But I'm Are you in your new place? Your rental place? Not your old place? No, yeah, the new rental. The new rental. Yes. Which honestly is delightful. The one big undelightful that we've learned over the last couple of weeks is that our smoke detectors are linked to the three, like across the three townhouses that oh we no. share. Oh no. So at like seven o'clock this morning our smoke alarm went off and we were like, no. Oh, that's a bummer. That's Someone's terrible. burning something. There's Somebody had a heart attack. <laughs> so it's because of one of your neighbors. Yeah. Yeah, they pretty much shut it off. That's irritating. I know. We did, uh, we were those people. Like it was like a post council and we hadn't cooked dinner yet and we were trying to make pot stickers when we yeah. burnt the bottom. So we were those like <laughs> karma. Um, but the first time it happened, we were just like, what is happening? Uh, because we like we like the stove's not on, the coffee maker's not on, nothing's on fire, there's no smoke, we haven't like and so I called our landlord and she said, Oh yeah, no, they're linked across all three units. How do you know when to do it again? So I did. I don't know why they would do So the yeah, idea is there should be a two-hour fire separation between each unit. That's true. Unless it's old, but no, I mean, it should still be at minimum in the 90s. Yeah, it should be a two-hour separation between each unit. Two-hour separation? That's fascinating. Yeah. They should, okay. If something happens and they can't get out of their unit, then well, the thought is they should be able to shelter there for two hours till the fire department can get there. Wow. Well, same with fire stairs. Well, then I really wish our smoke detectors weren't yeah. like <laughs> Now that I know that I have two hours. I can't see any reason why they would be late. Yeah. No, it's really, I mean, they weren't at our last place, and those were four connected. I mean, that does you yeah. tell me that they're so hard to Well, I came to yeah, me, and I couldn't Maybe remember it's just where. a circuit of probably. Yeah. 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 I know he came in in ten minutes for sessions. Yeah. We sat back there, and you sat Yeah, he works. Problem I have is living. That's right. Yeah. I 
haven't changed the battery and one of them starts oh, chirping sure. and I don't yeah. know Can you back on track where it is. Their sound really is so hard track, for like that. human it's ears to locate. Yeah. They, <laughs> are, they, <laughs> they, are, they are, and we have, <laughs> our upstairs is, has an opening awesome. to the downstairs, oh, so it could be up, it could be down, it could be in the bedroom, it could be in the... It's a true disaster. And then we found out, I was, like, one was yeah, chirping hours. and it was a different chirp, but it was like, oh, it must be. We searched high and low, couldn't find it. Finally turned out it was the, the little detector for oh, radon or whatever, yeah. not radon, but oh. carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide. Yeah. <laughs> it's very Fun new chirp. <laughs> Do you know you have one of those? We also have you know, a radon yeah. thing, but it doesn't chirp. Mm -hmm. so nice. All right. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask you to call the roll, please. Ms. French? Here. Mr. Prethurge? Here. Ms. Ragu? Here. Mr. Bracken? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Ms. Franklin? Here. Mayor Snavely? Here. If you'd like to join us, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Thank you very much. I would entertain a motion to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. Seconded. It's been moved and seconded. Any corrections or changes? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. We'll move now to public comments and anyone wishing to address council on items that are not on tonight's agenda or if they're on the consent agenda, this would be the time. You can come up and give us your name and where you live, and we will give you five minutes. If it's, you want to talk about something on the agenda, just hang on and we'll, we'll get to it in course. I'm not seeing anybody jumping. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we will move then to... Will we approve to, the consent agenda? Uh, I'm, Moving to <laughs> I'm just the trying consent to help you out, agenda. Bill. I know. We're moving to the consent agenda, and I would entertain a motion to approve it. So moved. Second. Now, are there any items to be removed? Okay. All those in favor of approving it, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. And we'll move to resolutions. You may read the first one. A resolution determining the total cost of the assessment by lot authorizing the list of assessments by lot to be filed with the clerk of Oxford City Council and ordering the same be open for public inspection and authorizing the clerk of the City Council to publish the notice in a newspaper of general circulation that the list of assessments by lot is available for public inspection. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. I think the title is almost as long as the resolution. <laughs> Welcome, Mike. I'll be brief, Your Honor. Thank okay. you. Uh, this is the third of four pieces of legislation for our annual curb gutter sidewalk assessment program. Uh, Council has already passed a resolution of necessity and a resolution authorizing a construction contract. Uh, this resolution uh, authorizes us to notify all the property owners of the actual costs of the project and uh, of their obligation to pay and their options to pay. So when you approve this resolution tonight, uh, we will notify all of, the, all of the property owners by mail of the amount owed and what their options are. And if there's a challenge, they can notify the clerk. And should there be no challenges, we'll come back to you with a authorizing ordinance later in the year. Okay. I'd be glad to answer questions. Thank you, Mike. Is there anyone from the public who would like to address this resolution? Okay, thank you very much. Council, any comments or questions? I have a question not about curb and gutter, but if we have to publish a notice uh, for, you know, a newspaper of general circulation, is the Journal News the only newspaper we can publish in, or can we publish in the Oxford Free Press, for example? It needs to be in the Hamilton Journal. A daily, it needs a daily, daily circulation. Paper. Yeah. Is that what the standard is? That's general that's circulation. my interpretation, I believe, from Ohio Revised oh. Code. Uh, the ordinance was changed, or pardon me, the, the revised code was changed, but I, I thought we had updated it, but we can look at that. 
you know, we have I, some language in our charter, so we'll, we'll look yeah, into that. I, 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 yeah, I'm just, that's a good question. It, I, if, if I, I think the, the, the newspaper of general daily circulation in you know, Oxford these days may be the, the Oxford Free Press. Yeah. So if there's, if there's an opportunity also to mix up our advertising, it just would be, might be good. So. I, I think that's the answer. Uh, my recollection was, refre uh, was refreshed. We'd have to do a charter amendment. Oh, the really? law has okay. changed right. to take into account that we can use technology and that uh, newspapers of daily circulation are becoming extinct in mm. many places. So it is possible to do it by internet service, but our charter, and I'll, I'll confirm this, but uh, our charter has language that we have to adhere to because the charter trumps the code. So that's fine. But if there's an alternate newspaper mm -hmm. to support, we maybe could do that. Good point. Are we ready? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. We'll move to the second one. A resolution extending the existing moratorium on alley development to January 16, 2025. Okay, is there a motion to adopt the resolution? Sec motion. Second. It's been moved <laughs> and seconded. Sam? Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, there has been a moratorium in place on alley development since April 2nd, uh, and uh, currently development of lots that do not have frontage on a street is permitted by the code under certain circumstances as long as it meets the minimum lot sizes. And we, when we originally had brought this to your attention, we had talked about a one-year moratorium, um, and council's wishes were to reduce that to try to speed things along as much as possible. As it turns out, we did not have uh, any recommendations for policy to vote on um, before the six months has uh, about to expire October 2nd. Uh, based on the feedback that we received from council previously, we did some more looking and looking at the timelines that would be required to have standard processes for amending zoning code. Um, and those would, those would start later this month and then they would not make it to council until uh, December and January and be in effect uh, by uh, January 16th and so the date that I've got in here for consideration would be about a three and a half month extension from the October 2nd date um, so Planning Commission held a work session uh, just last week to talk about uh, some of the topics and um, actually had some really good feedback from Planning Commission enough that staff is ready to move forward with some of the zoning code amendments uh, as far as putting them into the pipeline uh, for the November meeting because that the 45-day lead time um, We've also been talking with the service department fire department police department about some of the other items that have been of concern of council and staff um, And so those do not have those uh, lengthy timelines as zoning code does so those can come forward sooner uh, however uh, because of everything's kind of interrelated um, our recommendation would be to extend the moratorium um, if there still remains council interest uh, to what that would be for the zoning code uh, regarding setbacks and lot coverage and parking, those types of things uh, that need clarified uh, based on council's feedback to that mid-January timeline. So happy to answer any questions, but that was, uh, that was the tightest amount that we came up with without having any types of emergency ordinances of any kind or uh, special, special approval processes. Okay. Thank you, Sam. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone from the public who would like to address this resolution. Good evening, I'm Scott Webb, architect in town with a little experience on this particular issue and uh, I'd like to just offer a few comments this evening. Um, to start with, um, I've been confused about this moratorium from the start. It uh, didn't originate from planning commission. It didn't originate from city council. It seems to have originated from staff and we have been asking when this was voted on the first time, what's the emergency that required a moratorium to be put in place? Um, I don't feel like we've ever gotten much of an answer for that. Um, as uh, you know, we uh, held a work session also with city council two weeks ago that, that we attended. And uh, it seemed, I was shocked, frankly, that we're still asking the questions, what is the emergency that needs to be solved here? And uh, uh, staff had a PowerPoint presentation of some challenges that they felt needed to be solved here and I don't really agree with many of these challenges and I would think uh, maybe some common sense might be of value here so 
uh, there was a slide called Public Services Challenges Identified. One was stormwater with a lack of infrastructure. Stormwater is based on runoff and lot coverage. We have a lot coverage calculation or a restriction in the city. 45% coverage of two little lots is no different than a 45% coverage of one big lot. So our zoning code has already anticipated this. It's not putting any extra burden on the stormwater system. It is already, it doesn't provide for any extra development, so to speak, than what has already been anticipated. We talked about parking. Parking is required for all developments, including these alley developments. Uh, Council and Planning Commission has been pretty clear that parking is really not a priority in the Mile Square, especially in these areas uh, adjacent to the university. We'd rather their cars be in the long-term lots and have better use of our land. Um, talked about emergency services identification. This one's a puzzle to me. We have one square mile with numbered blocks in both directions. I don't know why this is hard if we say it's in the, the alley of the 200 block between uh, Walnut and Collins. That seems, that shouldn't be hard. I don't know why it seems like it's impossible for emergency services to locate these inside the square mile. We talked about trash services. Um, if anyone's out early in the mornings around here, you'll see Rumkey has a huge variety of vehicles and they service the alleys currently, sometimes with pickup trucks, sometimes with different sized trucks. It actually happens. It's not a problem that is in some emergency that needs to be solved in my opinion. Climate goals was another one. Loss of green space, again, 45% of one big lot, 45% of two small lots is exactly the same. Overhead electric was mentioned. Overhead electric is not regulated by the city. When we uh, do a development, we have to meet with Duke. This often results in these lines being put underground. Maybe that's the only solution. The city's not involved and certainly doesn't spend any money. The Duke has their own setback requirements and distances from property lines that are go sometimes beyond what the city's setbacks are. So I really don't think that Duke's concerns are a particular issue here. The Mile Square architecture was one. Um, you know, I find that one kind of interesting uh, in that we've been to Board of Zoning Appeals on one particular alley, hot, alley lot a couple times. In every case, staff comes out strongly against setback variances and makes it nearly impossible to win these cases with, uh, with staff soundly against you. So we came up with a house that we didn't need to come back to Board of Zoning Appeals the third time that actually fit. It's an 11 foot deep house. And uh, all of a sudden, the next day, there's a moratorium. So I'm curious about this. You know, staff mentioned uh, at the work session last week that you know maybe one idea would be to just kick this can down the road to our big zoning code rewrite that is underway or happening right away soon. <clears throat> I might suggest, how about we kick this can down the road and just don't approve this moratorium and let's just deal with it later. Let's just use the rules that we have intact. Let the people that own these properties exercise their development rights. And if something comes out of the new code, we'll face that down the road. But another three months, six months, um, it just doesn't seem fair to the property owners. And I don't think there's a problem that warrants an emergency that we need to stop all development here. Uh, I just frankly don't see it. So I appreciate your consideration. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Would anyone else like to address council? Oh, yeah. Uh, Jim Clausen, um, developer in Oxford. Uh, again, and I you just... You live on Contreras Road. Yeah, 6405 Contreras Road in Oxford. Lived here all my life. It just said it shouldn't be this hard. I mean, we had a six-month moratorium. I didn't really agree with that, but I said, okay, they can get everything done in six months, I'll, I'll work with it. So then that last meeting that I went to, again, just exactly what Mr. Webb said, here we go, Let, let's extend it for another six months, year, whatever. And I go, wait a minute, the council really is into infill development. You didn't want to expand the, the housing outside of Oxford, you wanted to keep it in town because of the you know, the quaintness of Oxford is, it's a cool place. So if you look at the alley development and some of the houses that have been built, they're really cool. Love them. 
and and again, I think um, we'll give you for, for an example. We built one at Collins Street. The city had a problem <clears throat> with the water coming off the shedding of the water. So uh, talked to Mr. Dreisbach. He said you really need to hook it up to the storm. So we paid for that to actually run the storm all the way to Spring Street. Costs us money and everything else. But I said okay. We're doing what's what's right, and so we went ahead with that. So again, I feel like developers have worked with the city to make things work. Then all of a sudden, this moratorium comes up, and it's just like it's like throwing sand in your face. So why 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 are we dealing with this? And again, let's just say if there was some problem that all of a sudden there it was just some emergency or something that then okay I understand. Uh, but then nothing that has occurred is like an emergency. So again, I just, you know, just expressing my feelings about the whole deal here. And I, and I, again, I know everybody up here. So I'm just like, you know, I live in Oxford. I've been here all my life. So let's work with the people that are here to develop and do things the right way. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jim. Anyone else like to address council on this resolution? Okay, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And I'll turn it over to council for their discussion. If you have any questions or comments. We had a good talk at planning. Um, we want increased density. We want all sorts of things I think uh, some of the developers here want. Um, but we want to do it right and offset or mitigate some of the issues that we have. And we're not asking for six months or a year. It's just the end of the year. It's coming up pretty quickly. And I think we can get meaningful legislation that addresses some of this. So I'm in support of it. Dave, you look like you'd like to speak. Well, I, you know, I'm, and I, I, I can feel both sides. I think that we opened the door for alley development and there were some kind of dimensions to it that when we did that at that time we hadn't fully thought through that we're learning along the way and so I appreciate the desire to go back to our code to legislate alley development properly and I think that that's right I, I do appreciate and sympathize with with the developer frustration we did set kind of a short moratorium but I think we anticipated more progress on this and so. and uh, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I think the Planning Commission, we had had a conversation about alley development some time ago, and then we had it again. I, I think that there's just been kind of a disconnect between what I felt like is council's consensus, the Planning Commission's consensus. We have concern about how to do it right, but there's a, you know, I, if it's staff, I feel concerned that they, they, they maybe don't want to be approving these, and I think that we need to get all lined up. and. Uh, to the degree that we can do this more quickly. I appreciate their, their patience. Um, a moratorium is designed not to just like put the brakes on indefinitely. It's so that you're expeditiously developing, doing research and developing. And I think we're a little behind on the eight ball and I think we need to catch up uh, it, so that we can just pass some good rules. And, and, and to share the conversation of the Planning Commission, they were wide ranging. There are a lot of issues we could solve, but I think the consensus of the Planning Commission is like, Let's find the standards so we can address the public safety issues without perfecting everything about the alleys and the mile square in the process. Let's just get this done, and I hope we can get this done sooner rather than later. Mike. <laughs> I'm not going to stand here and say I'm blameless because I voted for this moratorium, but I also realize that we cost you a building season. We cost you a summer that you couldn't build. Um, so if we're going to extend this moratorium, and it looks like we will, we have to make sure that we give staff the resources they need because I'm not going to extend it again. I'm not going to cost you guys another spring and another summer. So if we if we do, we will something will come out of it and we won't lose another summer. That, uh, go ahead. That was my sense as well is um, if we're able to extend it and somehow don't reach the benchmark that we were hoping for, I don't want to keep sort of nickel and diming the, ex the extension. I think we need to make a decision that um, we're willing to let it go at that point. But I also want to be sensitive to, you know, if you look at the goals progress that the city is doing, 
you know, the, the goals that city council set, they're doing a lot. And so I think that we have to recognize, I don't, I don't know that it's a matter of slow walking, I think there's just limited resources and that um, this will allow staff to, to meet that goal hopefully. And, and if it can't happen in that time, then, then we make a commitment that um, we won't push this any further. But um, I wanna address one of um, Mr. Webb's points though, because we were talking about um, finding the particular spaces or places for emergency services to access. But at the last meeting, I also asked, it wasn't just about locating them, but it was also about access for emergency vehicles to some extent, trying to navigate that. And um, that is something that will be addressed or can be addressed within the moratorium extension. And I'm seeing a nodding from the chief back there. Okay, thank you. So just to give a contrary opinion to what has already been expressed, um, seems to me that we gave them we had a six month moratorium that people grumbled about but were willing to adapt to and it appears to me that for five of those six months staff did nothing Now you can say they were overworked and, and busy and all that's fine but it seems to me that maybe they weren't all that interested in it and that is not a good message to give to the hard-working people in our community who want to do things to build in our community and it's like your time is irrelevant we're just not going to mess with it for five months and i i'm just not inclined to extend it again um, i can't imagine any super big harm that's going to happen in the month or so that it will take for it to get through planning and come to council which I think it still should. <clears throat> I just don't see that there's a thousand people waiting to build on our alleys. And I find most of our developers, Mr. Clausen included, are pretty reasonable people. And if we come up with something, <clears throat> they're likely to look at it and say, okay, we can adapt to that. We'll, we'll make some adaptations even <clears throat> as a consideration of the fact that we ended the moratorium. So I would urge my colleagues to consider ending this moratorium. I know that you want to go along with staff when they ask for it. I just think at this point there's nothing that terrible or urgent that's going to happen in the month or so that it'll take for us to get through the planning and, and council process. I mean, I I feel like staff had said they gave us an estimate of a year moratorium. I don't think it was arbitrary. I think that was an estimation of how long they felt it would take for them to do it. So I don't know, whenever we said, well, we'd like it to be faster, I think everyone wants it to be faster, including the city staff. I'm sure they don't want to be dealing with it still. Um, but I think that it was arbitrary on our side to say, let's cut it by 50 percent i mean even with the tenant legislation i said the same thing you know when the response was we give us until october to work on it that's not the response i wanted but it's also their estimation of how long it they thought it would take so i think that if they're asking for this it's still less than the 12 months that they had originally asked for so i don't know i feel like we should have trusted them when they first proposed 12 months. I have a question. Um, so Sam's probably a you question. Um, if we were to let the moratorium lapse tonight, we're kind of facing a uh, seasonal moratorium with the shift, right? Like construction doesn't really happen as much in November, December, and into January. So how much ground do we feel like we'll lose if we let it lapse tonight in that kind of very narrow gap of development yeah. that would be available? Good question. So um, building permits are valid for a year. Uh, so yeah, if the moratorium ended on October 2nd, then someone could submit a building permit application under the, those ordinances, and it would be valid till the next construction season. So there might be a couple buildings that would go through uh, a process without any new regulations which to Mayor Snavely's point, maybe that's not that big of a deal uh, if we continue with uh, some of the things that we've been talking about. And actually some of the changes, 
uh, that we are talking about uh, would actually remove some of the variance requirements. It would actually make it easier and they wouldn't have to go to BZA. So I think there's some, you know, some pro and con either, either way. Um, so if, if um, builders or developers decided to quickly react to a moratorium ending and submit a building permit application, they may still have to go through a, a BZA process, potentially, depending on which builder and which lot. Um, but that being said, um, you know, extending it would give a little bit more insulation uh, to the process um, and more ensure that maybe none would get submitted at, you know, before the new regulations are in place. But um, I think to Mayor Snavely's point, the, the risk is, is lower um, because of just the number is, is not that great. Um, the issues are still there. And fortunately, we haven't had to, to uh, work on the Chief Deathridge on this. Um, there hasn't been, as far as I know, um, you know any, any significant uh, losses. Um, but prevention, I think, is the, is the goal, so. Okay. Thank you, Sam. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Are you ready to vote? I guess I would just say that, I mean, I, it, to the degree we can get this done sooner and lift the moratorium when we're done, uh, if, if, that, if the moratorium route is the way we go, I mean, I, I, I understand that Mr. Moore has some draft legislation. You know, like we could, I know there's a step process, but um, if I vote for it, it's a maximum of uh, a moratorium and hoping that it's less. I mean, it, it's, it's fine, it could be, but it's also like a building lasts a really long time, you know? And so if we could make sure that the development happens properly, and that there are no regrets, then maybe four or five months is a worthwhile investment in time. Anyone else? All those in favor of the resolution indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay. The uh, resolution is approved for five, uh, for until January 16th. Uh, we'll move to item C. A resolution authorizing the city manager to apply for and accept up to $175,000 through the Ohio Department of Natural Resources for Martin Luther King Jr. Uptown Park improvements as appropriated by the 135th General Assembly through House Bill 2 for state fiscal years 2025 and 2026. Okay, is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Sam? Thank you, yes. You may have heard the announcement a couple months ago. Uh, we did actually receive this, the award already. Uh, it wasn't an application, so that's why we didn't come to you first. Um, but now we have to submit the actual application in order to, to get the funding we've already been awarded um, for. And it's awarded kind of broad uptown park improvements, but it was specifically requested uh, to be for the, uh, the fountain uh, replacement and for the restroom. Uh, and so we would either divide that up or put it um, on one or the other. And that's what the state has allowed us to do. So uh, this one would be going through the Department of Natural Resources. Okay. And is, is there a, regulation on the fountain that requires restrooms be It nearby. does. Yeah, it just so happened around the same time it, the fountain had reached the end of its useful life. Um, the regulations now require a restroom within 100 feet, which we were hoping to do anyway, so it's, it's a good dual purpose. Thank okay. you for mentioning that. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public who would like to address this resolution? Okay, thank you. Counselors, any questions or comments? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted and we'll move to the next one. A resolution authorizing the city manager to apply for and accept up to $800,000 through the Ohio Office of Budget and Management for a pedestrian railroad bridge for the Air Oxford Area Trail Phase 5 as appropriated by the 135th General Assembly through House Bill 2 for state fiscal years 2025 and 2026. Okay, is there a motion to adopt this resolution? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Sam? Thank you again. This is this is almost the exact same reasoning. Uh, Sarah Carruthers got this in House Bill 2 for us. And uh, this is this one is going through the Ohio Office of Budget and Management, 800,000 for the phase five trail, which is a fraction of the overall cost of the of that section of trail, but specifically 
Uh, it was named the Oxford Student Safety Project because of the proximity to the high school, and that got it through the process. So, Good deal. Thank you very much. Is there um, anyone from the public who would like to address this resolution? Okay. Council? Gratitude. Uh, you know, like for securing $800,000. I mean, we knew we were going for some pots of money, so this is like really like bonus money <laughs> that we really didn't anticipate. And the entrepreneurship on the part of everybody to scour all the different sources from OKI to the capital budget is really huge. These days, we're used to like $800,000, and we're just like $800,000 because it's such a big, more expensive project. But for the city of Oxford, $800,000 is a huge. I mean, Jessica and I were just talking about, Sam, you were all involved in the very first phase of the Oxford Area Trail. When we had, how are we going to come up with $170,000 for a local match? And we didn't know how we were going to do it. And somehow, you know, we did. But now we're, our game has just gotten bigger. So thanks, Sam, and outgoing state rep, Sarah Carruthers, mm -hmm. for this constituent service for the city of Oxford. Other comments or questions? I think a lot of credit should go to Sarah Carruthers, and we appreciate her efforts. All right, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Resolution is adopted, and we'll move to E. A resolution authorizing the city manager to extend the lease option agreement between the city of Oxford and Clean Capital Holdings, LLC, for approximately 20 acres of the city-owned closed municipal sanitary landfill until December 31st, 2024. Okay, is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Second. Thank you very much. And Doug. Thank you. So the option to lease the city's closed municipal landfill uh, with BQ Energy now, Clean Capital, will expire on September 21st. Uh, Clean Capital desires to extend this option uh, to December 31st, 2024, to await the outcome of HB 197, the Community Solar Pilot Program, and to further explore other funding options, including the lease purchase of the solar project or a power purchase agreement uh, with the city uh, using a blended rate for our electric aggregation program. I've had several discussions with staff over the last uh, several weeks, and I'm requesting that council extend this lease, op lease option agreement with Clean Capital to December 31st, 2024. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anyone from the public who would like to address this resolution? Okay, counselors, I know we all want this project I to I can go hear forward. the hesitation in Councilor Ragu's voice, like. <laughs> the eyebrows. <laughs> Furrowed brow. Um, yeah, what is the, are, is there any opportunity to try to work with someone who can give us the five megawatt system. Because if I'm looking at other partners, I mean, they're looking for $350 million in Department of Energy grant funding to lower the cost. And so I'm like, can we not maximize what we hope this project to be? You know, they've already sat on this for three, three years. Well, I wouldn't say they sat on it. They've been, you know, they had to go through the 513 permit process. They've done other uh, permit applications as well. Uh, they worked with Bayer Becker to do some preliminary uh, engineering work. You know, they've, they've got plans. It's, uh, I wouldn't characterize it that way, but, you know, I'm disappointed. I, I hesitated to come to you for an extension, but if we say it's over now, then we're back to square one. We'd have to develop another RFP, get proposals. And I think the stumbling block for us is that we have this huge uh, point of interconnection cost that anybody's gonna face, whether it's the city building a facility there and interconnecting to the system or what. Uh, so, you know, I've given this a lot of thought and I'm, you know, willing to give them some more time. Uh, I've also talked to our, uh, consultant for our electric aggregation program and and they're looking at some options for us so you know it just bothers me that we have this what, 20 acres this closed municipal sanitary landfill that really doesn't have any other use besides this uh, and EPA has said it's okay you know given the plans that they've submitted but the financing just hasn't hasn't worked out uh, 
you know, whether or not the community solar pilot program uh, gets uh, implemented, I I'm not sure. I mean, the legislature, we have uh, all of the state reps uh, running for election for a new four-year term. Uh, you've got uh, 16, 17 of the 33 senators up, you know, so I don't think there's going to be much activity at the legislature, but they feel that there will be some movement on this bill. Uh, if so, that would help them provide funding because there's a carve out for brownfield development, which the closed municipal sanitary landfill would qualify. So, you know, I get it, but I want to look at some other options because, you know, if we're back to square zero, uh, and we start all over, uh, you know. I just, in three years, a I lot know. can change, right? To have, we could have a very different RFP result. Um, well, this is I only just, an extension to the end of this year. I, yeah, I mean, to, just to pick up on that, it is hugely disappointing. And I know some of the things are structural related. We're all learning along the way. Who knew that the interconnection stuff was going to be so onerous um, but this is as long as I'm willing to give them you know they have taken plenty of time there are other vendors out there maybe they will back but I do think that like I guess I would say can we use this time to a give them their last chance and know that they're not going to be the <laughs> winning bidder <laughs> again and think about our RFP and maybe we need to think about different ways to approach it, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, so let's use the time to give them a last chance, but also to come up with a plan B that maybe has more likelihood this model of just leasing it. We've already learned kind of a lot of has kind of weaknesses because we, we have just no control over the site, you know? So maybe there's a model in which we have more control over the site um, other than just leasing. Yeah, there's just so much in three years as far as like IRA or the, sorry, did I say the right yeah. acronym? No, yeah, you know, that has come out within the past three years. And so I just, we had this land, like you said, this is an ideal situation for it. And we have this opportunity to have a lot of energy coming from it. I feel like there has to be some type of grant funding or something mm -hmm. to make the interconnection happen yeah. because it feels like we're squandering an opportunity because they don't want to invest in that interconnection. And yeah. this is something that's gonna last for a very long time. Why would we fall short? Well, and I, you know, part of the blame, I think, goes with the legislature. They're not moving this bill. Other states around us have a community solar, and it's working. I mean, if you look at the state of Ohio as a whole, we export electric power. We're a big user of electric power, and we export a lot of that power, you know, and uh, so wouldn't you think that they would want to add more generation in our state? I mean, even our electric aggregation program, we bring in wind power from Texas. So, you know, we're one of those exporters of power. So I would think that the state of Ohio should focus on ways that they can increase small uh, decentralized power. You know, if you think about it, during the summer months when it's very, very hot, there's peak loads out there that they're you know, concerned about being able to address in the future. And this decentralized power would address that, you know, it, the sun is out there when it's very, very hot. And, uh, but, you know, that's a bigger issue than ours. But, uh, you know, uh, we are looking at other options, but I don't have a solid proposal to bring to you with that. And, uh, you know, uh, we are working on options and, and I'd like to see, a, council extend this just until the end of the year and uh, you know uh, but, but that's entirely up to you obviously well, I, I think vice mayor and David both have a good points on this and we have waited a long time for something to happen I guess my thought is if we if we ended it now then we're starting a whole nother three years potentially. So it might be worth an effort to extend it, but I'm with Dave, I think it's like, let them know this is the last time we're extending it. What is the cost of not extending it? They could still do it here if we don't move forward on something else in their place, right? 
Well, I mean, they have to exercise the option, the lease and, you know, within this time period that expires now. Yeah, there's nothing to prevent us if they come back after they've lost that option to lease and say, you know, would you be willing to lease it to us if I'm understanding your question? Uh, yeah, if we don't go forward, nothing changes. There's not going to be something else happening to the land. Yeah. It's still reserved for exactly this purpose. And if they have the ability to do that, that would be great. Um, I worry about the opportunity cost, right? If there's another solar company out there that's willing to give us more than the third of the power that we thought we were going to get going forward, I don't want to be stuck with a third after also waiting three years, especially if there's no real downside to not renewing this. Could we not renew it and just say, hey, we're willing to work with you, but we might consider other options going forward? Sure, that's an option. But, you know, the regulatory process, I should have brought the file. I mean, there were a lot of steps that they had to complete to get there. And that's probably a two to three year process for any company. So if we start all over, you're looking at another. But that doesn't go away for them. And if they come and go, hey, you could go with another company, but guess what? We have all of the permitting, we're ready to go, we can move forward because nothing yeah. will have happened to the land over that time. Yeah. Now, yeah, if they I mean, go, hey, there's another company and they're willing to do all five mm -hmm. megawatts, and maybe we'd have to wait, but they guarantee that in a contract we do in a new lease, then we have that option. But if they come back and go, hey, we're ready to do this in three months, I think the same option is there whether we sign this or not. And again, going back to my friend who works on much bigger projects, I mean, she describes this as a small project. Oh, it's very the, small compared yeah, to Yeah, so she's like, oh, yeah, we used to do small projects like that. She was <laughs> shocked that nothing has happened within three years. Yeah. So someone in the industry is very concerned about why this has been slow walk so much mm -hmm. and also considers five megawatts small and they're downsizing it to what was it to 1.75 so it's like it's, it's even yeah. smaller well this so is where like i'm tempted because i just i mean the lease agreement we proved to be limited we were happy to do that with zero upfront cost to us but it may or may not be the best way so i think getting out of this there could be upsides you know, but again, I'm trading a bird in the bush as opposed to the bird in the hand. I mean, I think I'm with Doug. Let's give the bird in the hand the chance, but for four more months. But in the process, let's seriously look at other options. I mean, I look at this, you know, could one not do revenue bonds to finance municipally owned solar arrays that then we own the array and the power? You know, like there gotta be a variety of different ways to do this. You have the still the interconnection agreements, but I'm just, I mean, I'm just convinced that even if this thing gets developed, it's not the, necessarily the optimal model for us for op optimizing the... You're making a real good argument for, <laughs> for against not, the yeah. point you made, right? Yeah. Why would we move forward on something when we have possibly better options and we're saying this is not the best? Well, I don't I see the downside of going, look, we're not gonna renew your lease automatically, but we are absolutely willing to work with you. Like, let's go, we're ready. You haven't been waiting on us this whole time. <laughs> I, I agree. Yeah, if this decision limited that option of working with them, I would disagree. But if it doesn't, and I don't think it does, why limit our options? In fact, I sort of think we have an obligation not to, because I kind of feel bad that they've been assumingly good faith trying to move this forward and doing the permitting to sort of take away that potential because somebody else steps in. But the truth is we owe the obligation to the people in the city that if there is a better option, to not lock ourselves into that option when we have other choices. If they were gonna do the five megawatt, yeah, have until January, but they're not. So we have an opportunity, we gave them three years, they did, nothing has happened. And that so opportunity they, still exists. Right, so, and the IRA happened. And the infrastructure bill. So can you clarify, if we were to not extend the lease, I, you're, you're, I, I still am trying to understand that what, what do they have, I mean, could they still proceed or what do they lose if we do not extend it tonight? Can things still move forward with them? I think it's just a motivator. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can't answer that question. Uh, you know, I have been talking to, you know, other ideas, but I don't have anything concrete to bring to you yet. Uh, you know, the, the problem, as we all know, this is a small project. I mean, I have a map here of the power siding board, their solar case status. And five years ago, there were very few projects on this map in the state of Ohio. And now there's umpteen. Now, these are projects that are over 50 megawatts. These are big projects, two in Preble County. 
Alamo and uh, Angelina uh, that are you know <laughs> moving forward. So, you know, I think the problem here is that our location, they're tapping into a very small line, a 12 kV line rather than a big transmission line. So their Duke Energy is requiring a lot of money to tap into that line to protect their system. Uh, whereas I think the a company that's building a big facility can absorb that cost. And especially a lot of these are along big transmission lines. So, you know, there's, I've learned a lot through this process and I think we'll continue to learn more. But, you know, my goal has been to let's utilize that site. Uh, and and if, if the community solar bill finally sees the light of day, you know, that's advantageous to small businesses and folks that rent who can participate in a program like that. So, but that also changes. Oh, sorry, I was going to say if this goes through in the legislation as they're hoping, that also means that we probably would get totally different proposals yeah. under those circumstances, possibly for the full five megawatts, which. I don't know if you guys remember how excited it was and then how disappointed I was when it was knocked down to a third. It was significant, and I'd really like to get back there if there's any chance of doing that. Well, not so, as much as I was disappointed, Jason. <laughs> my question. Yeah. Um, we originally had planned for five megawatts, yeah. and the land area supports five. Yeah. They're going back to 1.75. Yeah. Does that mean that the rest of that land becomes available that we could then find somebody else to go on that extra land? I think that's a possibility because they're paying us per acre, so if they don't use the other acres, then, yeah. you know, but, you know, the more I, I think about it, they were, were gonna there take would the probably have acreage. to be an agreement with them to use that same interconnection point. And, uh, and then if they jump it up, then if you remember the different prices, if it's a 1.75, it was like a little less than 300,000, but if it was five megawatts, I believe it was like 2.2 million 2 .4. for the interconnection. What was it? 2.4. Yeah, so, you know. Well, but this was what we learned, for example, that they were saying, oh, we're only going for 1.7, so now we have these solar tracking arrays, they're gonna take up the majority of the site. And we say, well, can we say, hey, please concentrate your arrays on a portion of the site and we just don't have that control because we've leased the land to them, right? I mean, they no, they have an option to lease. They have an exercise. Okay, them. so you know, uh, we're just agreeing to extend that option to lease. I mean, you know, if if council chooses not to pass this, then you know we're back to square one. They may come back and say, uh, you know, we've worked things out. They may not, and if they don't, of course, we'll have to issue another RFP and see what we get. And. Uh, they, they had three years, and I see this as an opportunity for us to find our five megawatts, whether it's through them or someone else. I would like to option to option their lease. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? I think those are persuasive arguments. Yeah, I think one way or the other we're going to, I mean, I think we need to have an RFP just in general, because even that was not going to be sufficient. I mean, we need to look at a variety we may as well start of, working on it now. You know, a variety of, uh, of things. I mean, the landfill, that we're locked into that land, but again, there could be purchase power agreements on remote sites, and we need that energy plan to, that this is just a piece of. Um, I want to optimize it, but even if we don't optimize the landfill, it's just going to be a piece and a bigger puzzle that we're going to, I think we're going to have to have purchase power agreements through our energy aggregate aggregation, and we just need to so I guess I go, at this point, the landfill, I want to optimize it, but it's not our only card we have to play. And so to me, the bigger fish is like, how do we get the rest of our power? Um, it was the easiest option. I know, <laughs> we well, it didn't prove to be. I just find the whole thing so frustrating. Yeah. Because five years ago, I ran on this, among other things, that this was one of my top goals. And I just hate to see it fall apart and now, four years later, look at it and say, mm, there's nothing. Um, so I, I think you made persuasive arguments such that I will vote with you, but I'm it, with some trepidation because I don't want to see us lose the whole thing. So your vote is to? I'm probably going to vote no on it. I'm going to vote for the bird in the hand for four more months. <laughs> That's all if, I'm going to If anybody speaks up in a way in which not signing this would limit their options working with us going forward, 
I would agree. But if there's nothing that stops us from still doing that, but also other things, I have to vote against it. I mean, my, I, my biggest thing is the fact that there, the IRA has happened within the past three years. So a lot has changed that we owe it to the city to shoot for the five megawatts. We ready to vote? All those in favor of the resolution indicate by saying aye. 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 Um, and all those opposed say no. 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 The no's have it. Um, so the resolution is not adopted. Um, we'll move to F. A resolution accepting the bid and authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with Buckeye Fence Builders for the construction of the Oxford Dog Park project for a total cost not to exceed $62,000. Okay, is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Hi, Casey. Good evening. Talk to us about the dog park. I hope this is a very non-controversial topic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad. I don't know. You could be three for three. You can't tell. This is a resolution to allow us to move forward with the dog park project down on Bottom Road. Uh, this is just for the fencing of that project with this contractor. Uh, it doesn't include the concrete pads, the drinking fountains, the benches, and all those other things that we're going to need. But this is essentially step one of of moving forward. All those other things are sort of in the works and will coordinate together, but this contract is just for that fencing. And th so the fencing runs alongside both pathways and it does. all the way to the end? It goes close to the end, near where the boardwalk has been built. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't go all the way to that peak, okay. but it comes close. And it does also not go all the way to Bonham Road. There's a hundred, about 140 foot setback from Bonham Road before okay. the fencing begins. Is that a, I'm just asking questions, we can argue it later. <laughs> is, is that larger than the current dog park? It's uh, about triple the size okay. of the current dog park. Super, thank you. Yes, is there anyone from the public who would like to address this resolution before council? Okay, council, any questions or comments? This is so great. I think it's going to be great. As I understand it, you're now going to have small and large dog areas where currently we have one dog park that they're all mixed up. And will you then also be able to use it to kind of pasture, like if you need to reseed one, you can maybe they mix the dogs up. And we're just having two kind of areas, or is it going to be three? <coughs> there's, there's initially just going to be two areas, okay. uh, both of which are at least as large as the current dog park. So okay. if we ever did need to close one or the other, there's still a rather adequate amount of space for people to use in the okay. meantime. Um, but we're also hoping that because it's a lot larger, that the small area that gets used the most won't get trampled down so quickly that that will get spread out across the entire park and we won't have as many maintenance issues as we have now. Okay, but in that circumstance, you'd have to then mix up the large and the small dogs while you're restoring one of the fields. We do, but the existing dog park is not going away. Okay. Oh, it's okay. going to remain at least temporarily. We'll monitor it. We'll find out if it's still being used uh, and if we want to maintain it as a dog park or if we want to repurpose it back into just a neighborhood park, which is what it was prior to becoming a dog park. Okay. Any further questions or concerns? I'm so excited about this. <laughs> I've gone to many dog parks and there will not be any AstroTurf, right? It's there grass. There will not be, unless you want to give me about a million more dollars. No, no will not I mean, be any AstroTurf. I'm sure we know we the like carcinogen that's in AstroTurf. So I'm like, I do not want that. Um, yeah, and just as a comment, usually at dog parks, the small dog side is very rarely used. So it is interesting use of space where, I don't know, it's like, oh man, there's this empty space and just as a comment. Okay. All those in favor of the resolution indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. This one passes. I should <laughs> add that the Recreation Board is going to bring two dog park names to you oh. and allow you to choose one of those. Okay. Oh. That's exciting. But I won't tell you what we did that. <laughs> Why limit our options to just those two? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we will move then to ordinances, first reading. An ordinance approving the preliminary subdivision and final subdivision applications and plat of 14.48 acres in preparation for a future tractor supply company retail store at 
5728 College Corner Pike, Oxford, Ohio, 45056 with conditions. Okay, thank you very much, Sam. Thank you, yes, this is a, a fairly simple lot split, but because there's right of way dedication and easements, it needs to go through the council process. 14 acres of land being divided up into nine and four so that tractor supply can acquire the smaller piece. And they're also dedicating a, a small sliver along Todd Road and then at the intersection of Todd and 27 for potential improvements in the future, land that they didn't need anyway. So this would allow them to purchase the land and move forward with their project. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone from the public who would like to address this, res this ordinance on first reading? We'll be voting for it at our next council meeting, for it or against it. Okay, thank you very much. Council, any comments or questions? Seeing none, we will move on. Second readings, we have none, and so I'll move to announcements and communications. Start with the city manager, Doug Elliott. Thank you. Well, this has been a great year for economic development with tractor supply. Uh, coming to Oxford, and of course we've got the two hotels, Holiday and Express, Fairfield Inn. Uh, they're moving along nicely, and of course the Waffle House. So when you we saw the sign coming down the road today. You did? Okay. All right. And then of course we've got Al's Landing, and you know there's over 20 homes there, and many of them already sold. So it's been a good year for economic development here in the city of Oxford. I want to also. Uh, you had mentioned Representative Crothers and her uh, helping us get this, uh, what they used to call earmarks, but it's part of the, the state's capital uh, budget. And I want to thank Sam for his effort there and meeting with her and, and, and getting that funding. And, you know, I just can't say enough good things about the staff that we have working for us because they're leaving no stone unturned and always looking for sources of funding to lessen the burden on our local taxpayers. So Sam uh, is an example of that and, and uh, you know, whether it's streets or whatever or the trail, you know, we're, we're always uh, looking for sources of funding. Uh, the last thing that I want to share with Council, we received last Friday from the Butler County Board of Elections. Uh, they sent out the Oxford precinct ballot proofs for us to look at. And of course, uh, we reviewed issue two. It'll be found on page four of the four page ballot that you'll be receiving uh, when you go to vote, either by mail or in person uh, on the, at the general election. And uh, of course, this is issue two. Uh, we have 13 precincts in the city of Oxford. And the proposed ballot language was taken from the city's resolution of necessity, which of course followed the Ohio revised code. Uh, and that was adopted, this resolution of necessity, back in June. So uh, also, I'm happy to say that uh, thanks to Jessica and Ashley, uh, we have posted on our website today a Issue 2 Q&A and plus uh, a Issue 2 PowerPoint that I'll be utilizing with the mayor and the fire chief when we go around and address various service organizations. Uh, and that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Mike? Nothing tonight. Thank you. Okay. Jeff? Just a reminder that uh, Thursday night is Talawanda's homecoming parade. <coughs> Excuse me. That will kick off at 6 o'clock uh, down near Kramer Elementary. We'll come uptown uh, via College Avenue down High Street, uh, to Campus Avenue, and then back on Sycamore. Uh, we'll create a number of traffic issues. It is a very, very, very long parade. Uh, so if you need to come uptown or go anywhere in the north end, find alternative routes. Uh, and lastly, I know Chief would be very excited to uh, know that you guys are moving forward with Tractor Supply. Uh, he talks about it. Today, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'd be very upset if anything gets in the way. Thank you. Heidi? I have OK. Casey? There's, there's a lot happening on Saturday this weekend. Uh, yes, and it is. starts with a hike-a-thon in the morning from 9 to 1. And it's sort of headquartered at DeWitt Cabin as the starting location, but then sort of goes in every direction, uh, hiking along the trail and even an opportunity to look at the progress of the new boardwalk area that's been made by Three Valley Conservation Trust. Uh, and then, of course, Oktoberfest is also on Saturday uh, from 1 to 8 p.m. uptown, all kinds of fun and activities and music and 
and food trucks and all that good stuff. So uh, anything I'm leaving out of all that? Okay. Thank you, Casey. Go. Big weekend. Chief? Okay. Sam? One quick one. We have uh, two Oxford residents that are on the Regional Transit Board, and one notified me today that their one meeting a year is in Oxford tomorrow morning uh, at the College of Elm. So if anyone's interested in hearing what those what that group discusses, uh, Regional Transit, BCRTA, their buses run in town here and throughout the county, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning at College of Elm. Okay, thank you very much. Jessica. Thank you. Okay. Nothing, thank okay. you. Okay, so I have to correct a couple statements that I made. Um, it's one of the reasons why, as a law director, I don't like to talk to, unless I'm confident in my <laughs> answers, and so I have to I have to walk something back. Um, uh, the Ohio Revised Code, as it relates to assessment, is very clear in 729.08 that there must be publication in three consecutive weeks in a newspaper of general uh, circulation. However, that would be in conflict with our charter. However, <laughs> while the charter typically trumps the code, it does not on matters that relate to taxation issues because we have to follow the code. Ah. So that's the correct answer and why. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Michael? Well, it's been a crazy seven days, and I'm going to start this off, as I think many of you will, with, again, a condemnation of political violence. It's not our way. We solve our differences at the ballot box. Uh, I'm also going to mention that today is Constitution Day. I got my pocket Constitution from my friends at uh, at King Library who are out front registering students to vote, not only in Ohio, but I think they managed to help students get uh, absentee ballot forms from five or six different states. So very impressive group. Um, with that, uh, we'll pass it on. Thank you. Alex? Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, it is. I was listening to NPR on the radio on the way up, and they were talking about you know whether or not we've entered a new age of political violence, and it's a it's a weird world to live in where we've had two assassination attempts and a school shooting all in the last few weeks. Uh, so that's rough. Um, take care of yourselves, and to Mike's point, you know, talk about it, vote about it, don't pick up a firearm about it, or assault somebody in any other way. Um, in addition to being Constitution Day, it's also National Voter Registration Day. Very exciting. Um, so I know that I moved recently, um, even still within town, and I absolutely went to the Board of Elections website to make sure that I still knew where I was going to be voting Good. and that my change of address was updated because I would hate to go to my polling location and be told that I was in the wrong place or that I was not on the register. Um, it was... It will be a busy weekend in Oxford this weekend. It was a busy weekend in Oxford last weekend. Um, so thank you to Oxford Police Department. I saw Hamilton Police Department. Um, it was, a, I think I saw more people at Jaeger Stadium this weekend than I have seen in the entire time I've lived in Oxford. Um, it was very cool. I'm very disappointed Miami didn't win, but it was a great event um, and just a really wonderful example of how well the city and uh, Miami can work together to throw a, a big old party for Southwest Ohio. Um, I'm very excited about, I will be at both Hikeathon and Oktoberfest. Um, a preemptive thank you to city staff, uh, volunteers. It is a Herculean amount of work that goes into these events, so please go uptown and check them out. They are a ton of fun, um, and it's really Oxford at its best foot forward. And that's all I have. Okay, Chantel. I have kind of a somber update. So um, the tenants that came and spoke about um, mm -hmm. their complaints from Parkview Arms, one of them, Maria, has passed away. She had a medical condition that she unfortunately um, had some pretty bad complications from. And so I wish we, sorry, I wish we had passed this, the um, ordinances before she passed. Um, but I would lovingly call them Maria's laws. Uh, and it's something that I'll kind of leave you with something that was so touching that she said to me of, she, this makes me feel so important. Like she knew it would help so many families and she was willing to put herself in harm's way to get it done. So I just want to thank her. I wish she could have seen it. Um, and I look forward to us voting on it and know that 
it's going to help a lot of other people, even if they are not as brave as her. So um, thank you, Maria. Okay, thank you. Amber. Yes. Um, thank you for sharing that, Chantel. And um, Maria and her family are in our, our thoughts and our prayers. So Absolutely. Um, I, you know, people step up to do leadership whether it's running for a local office or serving a city staff, and you just never know what the future will, will bring you. And I'm, I'm really thinking about the people right now in Springfield. Um, you know, people along the political spectrum who are just leading and serving their community, and all of a sudden, because someone with a lot of power um, and a, a huge audience says something that tramples in xenophobia and hate, and everyone from teachers to city managers and assistant city managers and fire and, 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 and police are on the front lines receiving just a torrent of abuse. Um, and not to mention the immigrants um, from Haiti who live in Springfield, Ohio. Um, I believe that immigrants are the lifeblood of many communities. And, and the irony about it is that this all started because there were um, job opportunities. There were um, businesses and industry that were coming into Springfield and they didn't have enough local people to work in those businesses. And so immigrants and Haitians started coming to fill those slots. And yes, there's some um, burden on infrastructure with um, medical care and those kinds of things, but Springfield was working it out. And now all of the resources that would have gone to solving those challenges are going into um, dealing with this abuse, bomb threats. All, bomb threats, all kinds of abuse. So again, political violence, threats of political violence are never the answer. Um, I really want to appeal to everybody's better angels um, in these challenging times. And then um, to pivot to something more joyful, um, murals. <laughs> Murals are in Oxford. If you've been uptown and you've seen Joe Pressure's B mural, it's fantastic. It's been a community um, endeavor with students lining up to do a little bit of painting on the murals. And so um, really grateful for the partnerships that took place for that to happen. And I'd like to announce that we now have a final mural design for the mural at Peffer Park. Um, the muralist is Hannah Webb. Um, she will be flying in in October to do the mural. Um, it was uh, reported on in the Miami Student as a mural uh, about um, deer, which it started out being, but there's been a collaboration and she was very responsive to us and now it's foxes. It's super cool, it's really foxy, it's gonna be great. <laughs> and uh, we're excited about it. Okay, thank you, Jason. I can't say anything better than my fellow council members, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Okay, David. All right, first thing, I mean, I, I, I feel like the diss on Springfield is a diss on all of Ohio, and I think as an Ohioan, I've been kind of like offended at, you know, and feeling like, but I feel like the people in Springfield have risen to the challenge, um, but I hope other Ohioans also feel like, come on, you know, it's a, it's a good state that we live in. Um, I do have a technical question, which is, talk, speaking of moratoria, we were talk, we lift, we let the moratorium on the Airbnbs expire, but we, we also, we, there was consensus that more work needed to be done on the mile square. That like, and, and, and we did not extend that moratorium, but there was like, well, and so is another moratorium extending the, that for the mile square coming forward, or is that something, is that in the works? Because that's what I thought the consensus was, or have we just kind of moved on from that issue? No, so we moved on. That's not how, how I read the situation. I'm prepared to, you know, I, I thought that we... You can, you can ask for that legislation. And I thought more than one of us said that, I, I felt like that was the ask. I can prepare it if it, I need to do it, but I thought no, it was... just tell, tell the city manager what it is that you'd like him to do, and I'm sure he'll respond to it. Okay. But you have I to be explicit. It, well, I guess I'd like to know that the council you know, full council supports it. I mean, well, to ask I, for legislation, do we need a full council to support it? I, how much does it take to request legislation? You don't need to have a full council to support so it. So how much how many people does it take to Two. request legislation? Two. And I felt like Chantel and I asked for it, 
and I'm going to have to ask for it again or prepare myself. And, and what I could have done is just not said anything and like lots of things it would just go away. Um, so I guess I'm just, I, you know. I, I think feel you should just request it to the city manager. That would be great if you would do that. I'm happy to prepare it myself. Thank you. I don't think you need to prepare it yourself. You just need to let the city we manager know what you want. A, resolution forward with the moratorium that's the yeah. you know it's just uh, I guess I'm just thinking about the small staff that I have I mean we're working on a code update we're no, no, this, this I'm, I'm happy to prepare it It doesn't need to be work for anybody I can prepare yeah. the resolution you know, I just I, you and, know. and I know the Planning Commission will be dealing with it and, and that you know it's where council's priorities are we can do anything you want we just can't do everything wasn't the sticking point that there was the differentiation between the rental types, right, or that there was no differentiation? Yeah. Is that the yeah. problem? My impression is this was going to move forward through continuing talks in different commissions and boards because it was so complicated. Yeah. So I thought it was going to come back up, but not as an immediate piece of legislation to go yay or nay on. I think that was what the purpose of the moratorium is, to, to hold back <coughs> and we sort things out. But we sorted it out for everything but the mile square, but we didn't. I mean, basically, the mile square was, you know, maybe there's just miscommunication. I just felt like we had a link conversation, and I thought I understood what we were doing. Uh, at, that, at that point in time, it was, yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. I just, I need a clarification because I just hadn't heard anything, and I didn't see it on the agenda, and I'm happy to do it myself. Okay. Thank you, Dave. A um, couple of things. Um, today, I'm glad you mentioned that it was voter registration day. Um, the League of Women Voters was out in front of the Oxford Police Department registering voters, and they did have a lot of traffic, and they did note that many of them had been to the library, and so the library did catch some of them as well. Um, I was also glad to see that uh, the Oktoberfest and Hikeathon were mentioned. Those are big events, and I encourage everybody in town to take advantage. It's going to be a beautiful day, good to get out there. Um, I think. Be there at 1 o'clock at the city because the kickoff, there's a lot of things that go on and that are a lot of fun. Um, also, I want to uh, give a little shout out to Rena Murphy, who gave a great talk today at Kiwanis about the um, sustainability efforts of the city. And she did a really fine job and she represented the city well. Finally, I want to just tag on to what my colleagues have already said, that there is no room for political violence, and um, I think all of our hearts go out to the people of Springfield. It's not fair. Uh, all, they're getting death threats, they're getting bomb threats, they're being harassed. Uh, different groups are coming into their town to demonstrate. Uh, that could happen to Oxford, it could happen to any community, it could happen to Hamilton, it could happen to Middletown. And I think we need to show a little bit of solidarity with our colleagues in the city of Springfield and um, my heart goes out to them. And I think as funny as some of the memes are that have been floating around, maybe it's time to let those go. Uh, maybe it's time not to have those memes and, and try and make jokes about it because it's hurting people. So that's my two cents on that. Um, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. <laughs>